question is, am I too old to vlog? You tell me. 48 years old, 30 years of experience running a business, founder of new projects, loads of trials and tribulations in my personal business life. Do you find it interesting? Tell me. Because I don't think I'm too old to vlog. There's plenty of people out there on YouTube now watching all sorts of content. I have messages off of um, young, old, men, women, ask me questions. So it's got to be working. Yeah, I haven't got many subscribers yet. And it's hard to get them up. But I think I'm going to carry on doing it. Let's see how it goes. And uh, we'll see what, what I talk about next. Anyway, today, Friday, the office is very, very quiet. Stephanie, my uh, uh, sort of PA stroke social media girl, she's been off for three days. It's a bit sunny out there, isn't it? You know, is she ill or is she having some time off? I'm not sure. We will find out. Um, and um, John's not in today. So it's only me at the moment. Um, I've got a meeting at two o'clock with God knows, God knows who it is, some, a contractor or someone trying to sell me something. Um, so today, what am I going to do? I think I'm going to do another video, which I'm doing now. What am I going to call it? Who knows? Um, so, but I think what I'm gonna, just going to go over is, because I was talking to a couple of boys the other day, and basically, when... I first started, I never had all this office. You know, I never had, yeah, let's have a little walk around. I never had the office. Um, I never had any overheads, you know, all this beautiful stuff. Um, working out of a back, I never had any money because in 2000 and, 2010, when we started, New. I was on the really, I was in a bad place. My missus left me. I had no money. Credit crunch was really hitting hard with everyone. Um, and um, so we started new. And um, my stepdad got me a little contract hire, smart car. I think he even set me up in a little place, little house uh, to rent in his name because I couldn't get any finance. And um, we were traveling up every day in this little smart car to London to try and create a business. We never had an office, all I was doing was hitting AdWords hard. I always knew about branding and marketing and getting the phones ringing, and that's what I was good at. So, um, you know, I created my first Wix website, built it myself, really basic, but guess what? It worked, it didn't portray, um, expense and overheads it was good so it got the phones ringing um, and I think the first ever project which came in was I think it was in Munster Road and it was a little loft it wasn't even a loft conversion it was moving a wall in a loft and it was about three grand and it was about a grand profit fantastic 
So uh, me and my ex-business become partner, made a little bit of money each. And then I think a couple of days later, we had a project came come in um, in Battersea, which is a lower ground floor flat. Refurb, little kitchen side return. We did that, we made a little bit more money. But again, we had zero overheads. So the money we were making was ours. Fantastic. And then we went into uh, another project. I think that one was in Notting Hill. Another lower ground floor flat. And it was, it was a recommendation this time. So um, we did that. And um, I think the bill cost was 60, 70K. And um, guess what? Nice profit in our pockets, lovely. So we were building up our business on a company with zero overheads. We were still sharing a car to work, a little smart car, the overheads was next to nothing. Imagine driving a smart car, two six foot something men sharing a little smart car coming to London, <clears throat> pretending we were successful, you know, trying to go for bigger projects because we didn't want people to know that we were just starting up a new business so we were, we were selling 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 and you know the brand awareness was starting with NU because the logo from the day one we had, we had the logo you know it, so it was an amazing sort of um, bit of luck creating that logo ourselves and um, you know the big blue NU on the black background so we did that and you know the business started to grow and um, then then I think one day we um, there's a cafe in Fulham and it was called Tinto's on Fulham Palace Road. So we were in there and we were standing next to this guy. I never knew who it was and. Um, my ex-business partner said to me, do you know who that was? I said, no. He said it was David Gandhi, the model. Who the fuck's David Gandhi, the model, I said. So I went on Google and I found out. And then I went on Facebook. A friend requested him on Facebook. And then I said to him, hi, we've never met, but I was, you know, next time we're in Tinto's, you know, let's have a coffee. Uh, and guess what? He messaged me back. And um, we set up a meeting about two, three weeks later, and um, we sort of struck up a relationship with uh, Mr. Gandhi. And um, off the back of that, he was doing his first uh, property search because he wanted to buy a house and he wanted to do a basement. So we all worked together and we found him a, a house uh, in Fulham and um, we got planning for a full basement, side return, full, full refurbishment. <clears throat> And that was that. So, and off the back of that, um, basically we had a phone call. <clears throat> so we're, we're getting a little bit bigger now. We, ha we had a little office, um, a little service office on the New Kings Road, a little basement office. We had it for about two years. And then we had a phone call from this Australian woman can you do a painting job for my uh, for my boss in Fulham? Sure, let's go and have a look. So, um, let me just sit down here. Let me sit down. So, we, um, we had the phone call and we went round to this unit and we never knew who it was. But they want, it's about a 1500 square foot unit and she wanted it painted and new carpets and sort of tart up a bit so we did that and we were we were trying to guess who is this person who's the client so about a month into the job we went back in there and in the middle of the unit was a big flight case aluminium flight case and on the side it said kylie world tour we looked at each other and we thought, what? It's only Kylie Minogue. Yes, excellent. So um, we, um, being boys, 
we, no one was around. We opened the flight case up, and guess what? It was all Kylie's fucking clothes and stuff and dance stuff and personal stuff. We couldn't believe it. Um, and, um, you know, off the back of that job alone, we um, had a call from the uh, Kylie's PA and said, look, um, we still pretended we didn't know who it was. And um, she said, do you want to do some work around my boss's house? Yes, please. Yeah, let's do it. So me and my ex-business partner uh, went round to her place in Chelsea. And uh, when we walked in, Kylie was in the lounge. And she said, hi boys, I've heard all about you two. Because I think the PA had a little bit of a soft spot for the ex-business partner. So we went in there, had a little cuddle with Kylie and um, that was our sort of relationship with her for maybe over a year. Um, so we did our, our commercial unit in Fulham and we ended up doing a house in Chelsea as well. Replaced all the windows with sort of special acoustic glass and um, her bathrooms and some sort of general sort of DIY stuff for her to keep her in happy. And off, off the back of that, we ended up going to lots of events um, with with Gandhi. Gandhi became our mate for, for some time. Uh, DNG. We ended up. We went to um, we went to Milan with Gandhi to AC Milan and Inter Milan. Uh, guest of Dolce Gabbana. That was amazing. Uh, and went to a couple of DNG events in London uh, with Kylie and Gandhi. So we got some amazing pictures with them too. Um, so yeah, this was all really in the first couple of years of new. So we were up and coming. We had zero overheads, zero. We never had, we never sort of spent much on anything, you know. Um, and then we started to land some bigger projects. And obviously bigger projects means bigger overheads. You know, then we moved into this office where we are now. About three years ago, um, big office, staff, we did have three interior designers here, three architects, our office, you know, this overhead last year was, was, was big, big overheads. So the moral of this story, really, what I'm getting to, try and keep the overheads low, as low as bloody possible, because overheads are a killer. You know, you can earn all this bloody money and, you know, not benefit yourself because it all goes back into the business, onto how this, how you look and, the, the, you, know, you know, the image, yeah, an image is important, you know, our brand is important, our whole image is mega, mega, mega important. Um, and, um, but overheads as well, keep them low, keep, keep, keep them low. Anyway, that's a little bit about my past with Gans and Carl's. But um, let's have a little catch up tomorrow. Uh, no, well, maybe I'll do something over the weekend, I'm not sure yet. But listen, have a good Friday. Enjoy the weather. I think the weekend's going to be amazing. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like and share if you enjoy watching this video. Have a great day and I'll catch you later. See ya.